Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Whitney and I've got another lookbook for you. <laughs> um, I've got my module 2 lookbook and we are a couple of days into May now and I am wearing the modules now. So I'm actually filming this before May so I haven't actually started this experiment yet but <laughs> um, now that you're watching this on Friday I should already be wearing both my first module which I'm going to pop a link up here to um, the plans and the lookbook of module one and then also the plans for module two. Um, the whole module concept, if you haven't watched either of those, is that one module consists of one topper, two bottoms, and three tops. Very separates heavy and I did not come up with this. This is from Christy Russell. She's a stylist. She's not a seamstress but she is a stylist and uses this when she's putting wardrobes together for clients and for herself um, and I'll put a link to all of that information down below. But I thought it would be very applicable to seamstresses especially if you're wanting a minimalist wardrobe. I'm not particularly interested in a minimalist wardrobe necessarily but I do want my closet to be cohesive so that I'm wearing everything that's in it not just you know the same 20 items or whatever. So I am uh, deciding to do some modules that go together um, and that could also go into other modules which I'll be exploring later on in the year. Um, but anyway I'm here today with module two. So for this module I did not make everything brand new this month. I have one um, top that was already existing and then I refashioned a blazer and a pair of jeans. And I had a lot of people ask about how I refashioned both of those. And so I've done um, when I was, I'd already cut out the jeans, but I talk about how I did that. Um, but I did a video as I was doing both of those. And so that video will be going up next Friday. So if you're interested in refashioning and upcycling and that kind of stuff, I will have that video going up on Friday. Um, okay. <laughs> so let's get in and then I'll talk a little bit more about what we've got going on the rest of the month. All right, so we will start with the tops and work our way to the topper. And I have, you're going to notice before I get into this, that I, um, I need to stand up. That I have some, sorry, don't talk until you're seated, seated, Whitney. I have some new props. So um, I have ordered a backdrop, like um, the crossbar and stuff with a backdrop for my twirls and photos. And I've also ordered a, um, like a store mannequin, not just a dressmaker dummy that you're going to use to actually fit, but one that's more for display. It's actually smaller than I am, but I figured I could make it work <laughs> just to help show off the clothes a little bit better. Um, what else? So yes, the backdrop, the, the mannequin, and the muslin that goes um, with that backdrop. Um, and I also got a clothing rack and some nice hangers. And I literally spent under $200 for everything. So a <laughs> little upgrade to the channel. It's very exciting. Okay. So you have those, that to look forward to. The rest of the stuff's not here yet, but it should be here this week. Okay. So I made three tops. Let's, or I have three tops here. First, we'll talk about top one. I will have at the end of this video, I'm just going to briefly talk about everything, but at the end of the video, I will have a montage of me in all 12 outfits that these six items will make together. Okay, so top number one is the Deer and Dojeeve. I made the Deer and Dojeeve tank for module one, but this is um, the color blocked shirt option, and I actually made this back in February for So My Style, but um, the colors just went perfectly, and I love this shirt. I love stripes. Um, I love polka dots and I love stripes. They're in florals. <laughs> Those are my three favorite patterns. Um, but yes, this very classic standard um, top. I'm also um, in these modules trying to explore um, shapes and stuff that look the best on me um, and my body style-ish kind of, um, but just trying to decide, find things that make me want to reach for them time and time again, things that make me feel beautiful. So. <laughs> There's this top, and I just I I just love a good t-shirt. I find them comfortable. I did this three-quarter length, which I find is a flattering sleeve length on me. Um, it has a nice scoop neck. The color blocking breaks up my bust a little bit, so it's not so uniboob. <laughs> all in all, pretty good. All right, so that's top number one, and again, I didn't make that this month. That one was already existing in my closet. Top number two is another t-shirt. Mostly because in module one, I have one tank and then two blouses. So I kind of wanted a couple of more just layering pieces um, and t-shirts. And I made this um, Athena Cacao 
patterns um, Kaku, Athena Kaku. I can ne I never say her name right. Athena Kaku patterns. This is the Shona um, t-shirt, and this is the first time I've made it as a t-shirt. I made it as a shirt dress in so at so my style in February, but this is the first time I've made the t-shirt, and I absolutely love it. It's very simple, but it's not overly fitted. The Jeeve is pretty tight, but this one is not overly fitted, and I just really love it. Um, I actually haven't sewn the hems yet. They're glued in place with double stick tape, which I always do on my knits. I just haven't switched my machine over to cover stitch yet. But here it is. And I was very nervous. I only had, I had less than a yard of this um, knit from Emma One Sock. I got it in their roll-in sale. And um, I talked about in the plans video that I was just really hopeful I could be able to get more than a short sleeve out of it. I hate short sleeves on me. They either have to be like real loose and like angled short sleeve, not a cap sleeve, but you know what I mean? Like the, the grown on sleeve or whatever that's kind of angled on your arm or it needs to hit at my elbow or three quarter um, are my favorite. I don't even really like long sleeves that much because I'll end up pushing them up. I'm bothered by things around my hands. Um, but I find those the most flattering length on me. I think a short sleeve that hits like right mid arm that cuts straight across just right in line with my bust and just makes my boobs and upper body look larger than they are. So I was over the moon when I was able to get um, the sleeves out of this one. And I had to shorten them a little bit, but they actually hit me at a better spot than I think the dress does um, that I use the same sleeve pattern on. So very pleased with this. This is going to get so much wear this summer, even, yeah, in future modules. It's an array on it. It's just lovely. All right, and then my third top is the Sedona shirt by uh, Designer Stitch Patterns. And hopefully I'm popping pictures up of all the patterns. Okay, th I love this shirt, and I'm going to explain why. This is f um, a pattern for Sew My Style, and I'm one of the leaders for Sew My Style this month, and I'll talk about that a little bit more at the end. But um, I'm not... I'm focusing more on the other pattern for the month, the Novelista by Blank Slate Patterns, but I wanted to make both up. So I decided to go ahead and make the Sedona up for this capsule, mostly because I, sh I chose a very structured linen, and this pattern has the option for um, front waist starts and back waist starts, and I wanted that. Um, I didn't want anything too blousey in this structured linen because I, I, I was afraid it would make me look too big on top. But with sewing with modules and I showed you in um, my Sew My Style reveal of the shorts and I'll show you again when I get to the bottoms of this module. But I love when you have extra fabric from other pieces that then you can incorporate in the finishing details of other pieces in the module. I just think it just makes it so cohesive and so lovely. So my shorts that I'll show you in just a minute, I had enough fabric left over that I was able to do my collar stand, the inside of my collar stand, the underside of my collar so if I want to wear my collar popped which sometimes I do it's it's just really cute and I did the inside of my cuffs and I did my placket all in the my shorts fabric and I just think you know when you make your own clothes you can do that and um, that's kind of creatively that's one of my favorite parts of sewing so I'm not going to talk too much about this because I will talk about this ad nauseum, I'm sure, at the Sew My Style reveal at the end of May, but I really enjoyed this shirt. I think one, well, I'll talk about it at the end of May, but I think I do need to take the shoulder in just a little bit, which is a common fit alteration for me, um, but I made it as is for this. Um, anyway, I'll talk more about this pattern again at the end of May, but I love this shirt and I'm so excited that it's going to get a lot of wear here in May. All right. On to the two bottoms. <laughs> I made, let me get up again. Everything on my lovely rack here. I keep sitting on the dog. Okay, so I have two bottoms here. The first bottom are one of the um, shorts from Sew My Style from last month. Take these off a little bit on the hanger without making a mess. And these are the Chai Town Chinos. And again, this is the same fabric that I did those finishing details on the blouse I just showed you, and the shirt I just showed you. But yep, just a very classic short. Um, it's got the back welt pockets. And again, I'll put a pop a link to the video, the Sew My Style. I talk at length about these shorts and the other pair of shorts that I made for Sew My Style last month. Um, but these, hopefully, will get a lot of wear this month. Our weather is very chilly at the moment. <laughs> So I'm glad that in my capsule here of my four bottoms, three of them are pants because um, it's chilly. Uh, yeah, 
So hopefully by the end of the month, we are getting into uh, a little bit warmer weather and and it may be more at the end of the month before you even see these. Um, we had some warm weather and then it all went away. Okay, I'll hang those back up in a minute. All right, and then one of my refashions, I made a pair of Dawn jeans, Megan Nielsen Dawn jeans, out of a pair of thrifted men's jeans. <laughs> so these started off life as a size 36 or 38 um, waist and 32 inch inseam men's Wranglers. And I'm sure they were a work jean of some sort because they had been well loved. Um, the denim is just gorgeous on here. And you can see where I've taken like the Wrangler tag off. Um, I am just so pleased with the way these turned out. I did the view of hers that is the straight leg and I did, I did crop them. I didn't put a hem in because I didn't want to. <laughs> I let it uh, go raw, but I did um, sew a line of stitching there at the bottom so it shouldn't um, unravel any more than where it is right now. Because I did a, a real short line of stitching, and I will probably trim some of these long. I trimmed some, but I probably need to trim some more of these long white um, threads. But yes, I love these. I used as many of the original details as possible. All the top stitching is brand new. Um, oops. Sorry. <laughs> All the top stitching is brand new. I left the original button and buttonhole. So basically, I, I did stitch the waistband to the top of the pant. Um, at the because you could totally see the original stitch line because it, it had been pressed forever in that position but when I, I did not I couldn't when I got up to both the uh, buttonhole and the button so I literally just had to wedge them down on top of the top of the jean and then they're fastened in there with top stitching thread and I chose a gold top stitching thread Can you see that chose the gold top stitching thread and um, yeah, I love them. I love them. Now, of course, the waist was too big for me, too big for my jeans. So what I did is I sewed them in um, going towards the center back. And then I had like a big like gap back here in the center back. And I just pinched it to fit. So I do have a seam in my center back waistband right there. But I have a belt loop over it, so you can't even tell. Can't even tell that that's there. Um, those are the original pockets. My husband said, God, your pockets are gigantic. And I'm like, well, it's the original men's pockets, and I wanted them um, on there. I put new rivets in. Um, I used the existing. I did use the existing zipper, but I did take it out and put it back in. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to think what else. There's just such cool, like... It's real worn, like we've got a lot of real worn spots on here. This patched area right there, I just love these. I used a quilting cotton for my pocketing. Um, yeah, I just, I really, really love these jeans. And uh, yeah, they're, they'll probably get worn the most out of all the bottoms, I would assume, this month. But um, yeah, that's very exciting. And again, I have a video kind of talking about how I did that. Um, coming to you next Friday. And it's also going to talk about the last piece, which is my topper. And it is this vintage blazer that I thrifted. It is a navy blue wool blazer that had, hold on, had the world's largest shoulder pads in it. <laughs> Definitely from the 80s. But I wanted to, um, I wanted to keep, I talked about changing out the lining because there was a little tear in the current lining and doing something fun. But then I got to thinking like, I don't want to lose any of the, t the cool vintage tags. It was made in Canada. Who knows when? Um, but yeah, it is a wool coat or wool blazer and it's got a nylon lining. Um, and also it's pretty fitted. It's double breasted, which actually as far as my, um, body shape and stuff are concerned. I've kind of quit talking about that. I picked the straight leg of the jeans be to help balance out my hips um, because I'm very straight through my hips. So to give me more width, um, I put a straighter leg instead of doing a tapered leg because I want to add more width to the bottom half of my body to balance out my upper body. 
So um, technically a double breasted blazer is horrible for busty women and actually when I have this buttoned, which I would never wear it buttoned, um, I look like a football player even though I put in much smaller shoulder, I mean you can tell, I put in much smaller shoulder pads. Um, I replaced the shoulder pads and then it had just regular self-covered buttons but I put on these presidential um, metal buttons that I got from Wawak. I have the smaller size for the sleeve and then the bigger size for the blazer and I literally just swapped out the buttons and I think it makes the blazer look more expensive. So I mean yeah I just it's a navy blue blazer like how can you go wrong? So given the state of the current weather I will probably be wearing this a ton. But that is it. Those are my six pieces for module two. And uh, they came together pretty quickly. Although again, the blazer was a quick refashion and I'd already made one of the shirts. The other shirt was just a knit shirt that I whipped up on the serger real quick. Um, yeah, that's all six pieces. So I will have a little montage of me wearing all um, 12 of the outfits. So these six pieces make 12 outfits. Um, and it'll be a montage just of these six pieces. And then at the end of May, I will show you um, how I've combined it with module one, which they were designed to go together, which was another six pieces, and uh, what all those outfits kind of look like um, when it's all combined. Because I think, because I added in a dress and a jumpsuit to, the, to that module as well, and I feel like the module idea came from Christy Russell, and her information is down below, but um, I, I feel like she did a video of 14 pieces of clothing equals like 107 outfits or some ridiculous number and I'm not going to change my clothes 107 as much as I love you all <laughs> changing my clothes 107 times is a lot so um, I, you'll definitely see all 31 outfits that I'm going to put together with these 14 pieces but um, I may throw a few others in there too just so you can kind of see a little bit more versatility um, but yeah that is module two so be on the lookout for um, end of, or probably the beginning of June for that. Uh, coming up, so my style is shirts this month, and I mentioned that kind of briefly before. I'm one of the leaders, so I will have a couple of shirt making tutorials coming at you this month. Um, one is how to use bias tape as a facing for shirt tail hems, because those can be very tricky to sew, um, to sew just a nice hem because they're so curved. And then I also have a collar and collar stand, like how to sew a collar and collar stand into a shirt. Um, and I use the burrito method. I've talked about that. I think in my pants sew along um, and I've done shirt yokes, blouse yokes with the burrito method. I do my shirt, shirt collars the same way, um, which kind of makes them going kind of quick. So I will have a tutorial on that as well. Um, but on Tuesday, I'm going to have a, a, I'm taking over the Novelista shirt. My blank slate patterns is kind of the shirt I'm focusing most of my stuff on this month. And I will have a video on Tuesday about choosing fabric and style inspiration um, for that. It's a button down shirt, but it has a couple of neat details that you could choose to do for the back. So that's what we have coming up. Don't forget, we still are in our giveaway until May 12th, and I will pop a link to that video up here as well. Um, and don't forget that that uh, coupon code is still good. So if you want to save 30% at Smuggler's Daughter, um, I've got a coupon code for you in that video that I just linked for the giveaway. <laughs> I'll put it down below here too. Um, and again, she has free shipping in the U.S. if you spend over 100 and then she does ship internationally. It's just standard rates apply for the international shipping. Okay, I think that's all I have for you today. <laughs> so I will see you guys on Tuesday with a Sew My Style fabric inspiration slash styling um, what type of fabric to use, that kind of thing, video on Tuesday. And then next Friday, you will have, um, oh, the refashion. I was like, I just talked about it. The refashion video on the how I did the blazer and jeans. So that's it for today. Hope you guys have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you all on Tuesday.